Hello, welcome to another video of the Complete Angular course. In this video, we begin building the page for the post feed. We will have a page to display and create posts with a button at the bottom right corner of the window. When we click on the button, a dialog will pop up for us to create a post. If we select an image, a preview will appear. In addition to the Angular UI material components that we used so far, I'll be using the dialog and icon components as well. If you have not already, subscribe to the channel to get updates on the next video for this project. To begin, open the project from where we left off in the last session and log out. Go to the app module file and add the material dialog and icon modules to the project. Save the project and open the terminal to create the post feed component. Run the ng-generate component command and place it in a directory called pages. Go to the app routing module file and add a route. Use post feed for the path and the post feed component for the component. Go to the app component TypeScript file and locate the get user profile function. Inside the on update callback function, use the if statement to check if the user has a profile. If they have a profile, Navigate to the post feed page. Grab the router object and then call the navigate method. If we take a look at the rundown of our app, when a visitor visits our website, it will check if they are logged in. If not, nothing will happen. If they are, it will check if their account is verified. If it is, it will check if the user has a profile. If they have one, it will go to the post feed page. If we run the app, nothing will happen since we are logged out. If we log in, we will be directed to the post feed page. Go to the post feed component HTML page. Remove the default code and add a button. Use the material add icon for the content and apply the matte fab style from Angular Material. Set the color to warm and call it post button. Go to the post feed CSS file and add a selector for the post button. The button will have a fixed position at the bottom right corner 2M away. If we go to our app, the button will appear at the bottom right corner. Let's add the dialog to create a post. Go to the post feed HTML page and attach a click event to the button. Then go to the post feed TypeScript file and define the function. Import math dialog from Angular Material and then inject it inside the constructor.
Similar to the bottom sheet, we can use the material dialog object to open the dialog. In the create post click function, grab the dialog object and call the open method. For the parameter, we need to pass in the component that we want to use for the dialog content. Since we do not have one created, we cannot pass in anything yet. In the terminal, create another component called create post and place it in the tools directory. Once the component is created, pass the component inside the open method. If we go back to the app and click on the add post button, a dialog will show up. Now let's add the content for the dialog component. If we take a look at the design, we have a card component in the middle. Inside the card, we have a header, a text area so we can type our comments, and a toolbar with actions we can do to the post. If we add an image, there'll be a small preview. Go to the Create Post Component HTML page. Remove the default code and add a card component. Inside the card, add a header by using the Mat Card Header element. Then add the title using the Mat Card Title element. For the content, Add a div element underneath the header element and place a text area inside. Lastly, add the action bar. Use the mat cart actions element and align the items to the right by using the align attribute and setting it to end. Inside the action bar, Add two buttons. For the first button, apply the matte button style and set the color to warm. For the content, add a label element and set the full attribute to photo upload. Inside the label, add an input element and a material insert photo icon. Call the input photo upload so the label will use it as a reference. Then set the type of the input to file and have it accept images only. The label will allow us to replace the default file input element with the icon. For the second button, put post for the content, then apply the matte flat button style and set the color to warm. If we go to the app and open the dialog, we're almost there. We just need to hide the input element and set the styles for the text area. Go to the Create Post Component CSS file and add the selectors for photo upload and text area. For photo upload, set display to none so it will be invisible. For the text area, set the font size to 1.5m. Padding to 1m. Resize to none so it cannot be resized. Width to 250 pixels. Minimum height to 200 pixels. And then remove the border and outline. If we go to our app again and open the dialog, it will look closer to how we want it. If we click on the icon button, it will open a dialog to choose our image. 
The next step is to add the preview section so the chosen image will be displayed. Go to the Create Post HTML page. Underneath the content div, add another div and call it Post Preview. Inside the div, add an image element and call it Post Preview Image. Go to the Create Post CSS file and add the selectors for Post Preview and Post Preview Image. For Post Preview, set text align to right and give it a top margin of 1M. For Post Preview Image, Set object fit to cover and object position to center. This will center and crop the image to fit the container. Set the width to 150 pixels and height of 100 pixels to get the rectangular shape. Lastly, set the border radius to 1M to get around the edges and the border to one pix dash gray. If we go to the app and open the dialog, there'll be a small preview window at the bottom. Now let's add the code to display the image that was selected. Go to the create post HTML page. Locate the input for the post image. Then give it a template reference and attach a change event to it. For the parameter, pass in the input reference. Go to the create post TypeScript file and define the function for the change event. Declare a file variable called selected image file to represent the current selected image file. Inside the on photo selected function, get the selected file by taking the input and accessing the file's property. The file's property returns an array of the selected images, so we need to use the square brackets to get the first element. Then pass it into the selected image file variable. Once we have the selected image file, we need to convert the file into a readable string for the preview image container. To do this, create a file reader object. Then grab the file reader object and call the read as data URL method. For the parameter, pass in the selected image file. Grab the file reader object again and attach the load and event listener to it. Inside the callback function, get the result of the converted data from the file reader object and pass it into a variable. If we go back to the HTML page, the preview image container element is an image element called post preview image. To get the reference for it, grab the document object and call the get element by ID function. Then pass in the ID of the container.
Once we have the image element reference, set the source property to the readable string data. To stop this code from crashing because no image is selected, add an if statement above the file reader object and return out of the method when the selected image file is null. Lastly, go to the create post HTML page and locate the post preview div. We only want to show the preview if there is a selected image file. If we go back to the app and open the dialog, the preview does not show. If we select an image, the preview will appear. If we cancel the selection, our code will not crash since we handled that in our code. That's all for this video. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. In the next video, we will take the data from the component and upload the files to our database so we can retrieve it later. If you have questions, leave a comment. See you in the next video.